everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hit hey, the song. Hey. You know, it really yeah, doesn't even trying matter. To just song. trying to yeah. listen to the freaking song. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The Bronx. I got a tidbit regarding my new favorite NFL team. All right. Yeah, that's the Kansas City Chiefs, or yep. you got somebody else? No, okay. I like the Chiefs. Okay. Uh, do you realize they almost had to forfeit that game yesterday? Why was that? Oh, yeah, the equipment. Their equipment was mistakenly sent to Newark, New Jersey. Oh, I saw that. But and they didn't know uh, that they... it didn't get to Boston until 2.40 p.m., it made it in time. Had that had it not arrived, they would have had to uh, forfeit. Well, I never heard of that before. Uh, well, who would they? Uh, can't we blame the shipping company and delay it a little bit? Well, the speculation what? was Belichick had it sent <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. to another airport. Yeah, that's probably uh, that's probably true. The I, I don't think you could have blamed the Chiefs for a shipping error. Could well, you? The uh, Chiefs, which airline screwed up? The Chiefs, were, well, they, they would charter, obviously, yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. It says here the outlet, meaning uh, ESPN, <laughs> reported that the Chiefs were responsible for the mishap after the team never took the equipment, which included about 35 of the players' bags, off a plane. The team, so they had their, Why the hell their, the plane their land in Newark? So their equipment manager oh, wait. didn't They get landed it in Boston, all right. Mm-hmm. But that plane then must have gone to Newark oh, with yeah, the stuff char- still on it. Chartered, ah. It was chartered to somebody else yeah. or something, and uh, they uh, they didn't get all the bags off. Okay, well, well that would have uh, that would have been quite the uh, quite the crisis. Remember the time Bud got penalized fifteen <laughs> yards for getting to the Silverdome too late? Yep, they, he they, did. Yeah, they rolled in about. Uh, you know, Bud wouldn't let him get there till like an hour before the game, yeah, because he didn't want him sitting around. Right, and, uh, and uh, they got stuck in the traffic at the Silverdome, and uh, they showed up about twenty minutes ahead of time, and they weren't wow. they weren't properly well be decked. I was with them when they were start. going to Soldier Stadium in Chicago, and they were going to be late, and they drove on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> the bus went up the yeah, sidewalk yeah. to uh, avoid some traffic and back down into the street with cops leading the way. Mm-hmm. His greatest, however, was back in the day when they used to play exhibition games on Friday nights at Met Stadium, and I don't believe they kicked off till seven thirty, and they would he wouldn't allow the players to leave mm-hmm. in their cars. They could drive home until like five in the afternoon because he wanted them to, and he wanted them to go directly to the stadium right. with their cars, and then they'd be off for the weekend, but. Jim Marshall used to shoot the uh, the <laughs> pistol off to get him started. He'd shoot a gun up in the air, and then they'd all take off. And from Bud, Mankato, you mean? From Mankato, yeah. and Bud would call the highway patrol and tell them that they were coming <laughs> and to give them speeding tickets. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want them getting home in an hour, sneaking off for a quickie and showing up at yeah. the stadium. Uh, so he used to he used to rat them out and say they're on the way. And they should be in St. Peter anytime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. That was not a memorable Vikings game yesterday. That was a dullard, I thought. I got to make this confession. It was 12.30. I hadn't watched a minute. So I looked at my phone to see what was happening and saw that nothing was happening. So I just continued to read and check every once in a while. And apparently I missed one of the worst games of all time. The biggest takeaway from yesterday. Yeah. Walt Anderson and yes. his crew. I heard it was My good. God. It was every other Absolutely play. Absolutely the opposite of the Seattle game where they didn't throw any flags. Right. Huh? But it was clearly, and it was being talked about extensively on the broadcast. But they were—they specifically said we're going to penalize anything we see. It, it made the game. It made a boring game extremely unwatchable. And uh, is, is Walt famous for this? Oh yeah, they—they were the number one leading team heading into this last weekend. 
Is Lamar Jackson considered better than Mahomes? I wouldn't say that, but I in, watch in a this, lot of Buffalo and Baltimore. In the same, I watch quite. I watch some of that too. Yeah. In the same category, yeah. Uh, what can that kid run? Yeah. Holy yeah. mackerel! Big. Uh, I think he's no, he's not bigger than Mahomes. He's bigger no. than Robert Griffin was, I think. But uh, yeah, he's he's pretty damn good. You know what they both got going for him, Joe? Huh. They can throw from angles, yep. sidearm. Yep. Yep. They do, they don't have to deliver the ball from over the top or from the same angle. They can throw this side. One the the game breaking touchdown that Jackson threw was side armor mm-hmm. into a crease Mahomes between a couple of well. guys. Oh, Mahomes is the They're best. They're revolutionary ever. quarterbacks. Yeah, they are. It's it's uh, no doubt about it. And uh, I think they're going to end up getting guys drafted. Earlier than they probably like the guy, the Virginia quarterbacks, an athlete, but he isn't a thrower like these guys. But that's the new, really mobile guy, Trevor Lawrence from Clemson. The the, the really mobile guys are going to the ones that are going to end up getting drafted high. A kid from Ohio future. State. Yeah, Fields will get drafted real high, and mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure about him, but uh, you know he's 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 talented. Oh, he's but he made, he made some bad throws against the Badgers. I thought I watched that whole Badger game. That was fun. I did too. Yeah. The Outback Bowl. That's it, it's a it, January first bowl. It has uh, raised itself in prestige the last several years. A few years ago, the Citrus Bowl was paying almost. Uh, was paying double the Outback when it came to per team, but the Outback's up over six million per team now, and the Citrus is eight million something. So they're a lot closer. The Citrus still gets first pick. Uh, they still get first pick over the Outback Bowl, but uh, but they uh, you know it's pretty similar. Uh, I think that Auburn's a tougher uh, opponent for them than Alabama would have been because Alabama a won't give a damn. And B, uh, they might have about six or seven guys who don't play because they, they get protecting themselves yeah. from the draft. So, but the uh, Gophers are undefeated against Alabama. They have never games. lost to them. It is astounding how seldom we have played. The Gophers have played Southeast Conference teams. I looked it up. What's the, the record overall? Uh, six wins, four losses. Huh. Wow. All I looked these it years, up, 10 I, games. I huh? looked it up. The last time they played, a, they scheduled a regular season game against an SE team, SEC team was Vanderbilt in 1959. They played Vanderbilt four times. They played Tulane once when Tulane was an SEC team. And they played Ole Miss in 1932. They've only played six regular season games against uh, all SEC teams, and then they've played these bowl games. They're six and four. Now, the very inaccurate communications department at the University of Minnesota is claiming that they are such and such against the SEC. They're claiming eight games against Missouri when they were a Big Eight team, mm-hmm. and they were those games were played between. 1943, I looked it up today, and 1966, I believe, 1966. But they were in the SEC when they played them in the Citrus Bowl, right? Yeah, I I, I count that one. Okay. But if you weren't in the SEC, (laughs) we didn't play an SEC team, so get your bleep together over there. Come on. The 10-2 Notre Dames are playing in In the the camping world. How the the hell did that happen? How did you allow that to happen? That is the B-Squad game. They're At playing Orlando. Iowa State. They're playing Ohio State. No. No, they're not. I'm sorry, Iowa State. Iowa, Iowa State. 11 Which a. is a different step. On December 27th. Yes. I don't know why. Why did they get such a lousy I don't bowl? Know. Why did they not? Because they travel well, too. I mean, they'll sell a lot of tickets. Yeah. I, I didn't get that one either. You no. know there's an Idaho potato bowl? Oh, yeah, in Boise. <laughs> Come on. Yep. Wouldn't you like to be in Boise on December 28th <laughs> no, or whatever it no. is? That's Ohio and Nevada. Ohio 6-6, six, six, Nevada 7-5. and five. How would you like to be a proud member of the Toledo Rockets today, though, Joe? Uh, 79... Teams were eligible to play in bowl games. Right, seventy eight made it. The Rockets got short. They got, got snubbed. They six and six. Yeah, 
They went. Uh, they beat BYU this year, but you know they went all three down the stretch. You know what would cure that? What? Or Another bowl. bowl. <laughs> there it, well, here's the good news. Next year, Fenway Park. We're adding one. Really? Yep, we're adding one, and I think we might be adding two. Holy cow. That was always my favorite part of the days in the radio, was the uh, bowl schedule. I mean, we would be previewing it during sports talk. <laughs> yes. What the bleep is the Beef O'Brady Bowl? How about First I Responder Bowl? Chick I, I think Beef, I think, uh, beef O'Brady uh, uh, packed it in. Oh, we I don't think they're doing that well. You have the Cheez-It Bowl. Cheez-It? Yeah, Cheez-It. Air Force uh, in Washington State. Cheez-It can afford it. I think they sell a lot of Cheez-Its. Yes, they do. You? They do. Mm-hmm. The Celebration Bowl. I never There's heard of that one. one. Uh, the, the one in the Bahamas is uh, Maker's Wanted. Is that a brand of bourbon? It must Maker's, be. Uh, Maker's, Maker's Mark? Mark? Yeah, but it says Maker's Wanted. Is that? I a, don't know what that means. Uh, is that a I'm certain, looking that up right now. That's 7-5 and five Buffalo versus 7-5 and five Charlotte. One. That's the first one. December 20. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, I didn't think alcohol. Could they sell alcoholic? Sponsorships for the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl. Yes, yeah. and what is Makers, what is makers wanted? wanted? Let's see what we got here. It's obviously, that's what Rookie says at about seven thirty. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Makers <laughs> Wanted. Yeah. The wife is uh, keeps herself a little supply of Makers. You know, mm-hmm. good. Yeah, <laughs> you got a good one, by the way. And uh, and uh, she had a nice jug down at the uh, at the condo. She had a little jug of makers there, and she she takes about four. What is this moonshining days? A no, jug? No, no, she takes about four <laughs> shots yep. a spring, you know, yeah. and then you know it just gets better and better. Yeah. yeah. Lavelle and Larry, his oh, brother, no. visited. They left her this. Yeah. They left her you like You can't do that. Get rid of it. Yeah. You dummies, pour it out so she doesn't remember so that you drank all you sure the booze. That, yeah. You sure I didn't have anything to do with that? Yeah, I know what it is. You uh, might have been in on that, Makerswanted.org bowl game. It says, Elk Grove Village is proud to be the title sponsor for the 2019 Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl to be played in the Bahamas. What is Makers Wanted? Makers, a product? Uh, um, it doesn't say yet. The slogan, Makers Wanted, serves as a call to action for the city's thriving business community. Oh, so it's a recruitment it's not deal. a beer. Then. So it's okay. not a, a, a liquor. Mm-hmm. No. It's a movement. Okay. All right. It's a movement. So, I prefer okay. Makers Mark. Yes. <laughs> the uh, and, uh, and by the way, they got her vodka, too. <laughs> She Maybe some, they had a little taste she test. Some high test vodka. She had some high test vodka, and they got a sliver of that left in there, too. You know, if you ever don't want to be asked back, you drink everybody's booze when you leave. <laughs> the Outbacks in Tampa. Yes. Where the uh, Bucks play, yes, probably. Yes, that's good. Uh, you yeah. got that, sir. Yeah. You're right. Will they sell tickets to that? Mm-hmm. Will they sell a few? The Gulfs? Oh, yeah. Well, they had, what, 15,000 showed up for the Citrus, and we like P.J. better than Jerry, don't we? Plus, it's warm in Tampa compared to here. Mm Mm-hmm. It's going to get a little nippy on uh, Wednesday, huh? High of zero? Yeah. Low uh, 15, Mm -hmm. 20 below. It'll be a good weekend to be with the Vikes. They go to L.A. Mm -hmm. to play the uh, Chargers in what remains the most stupid deal I've ever heard of in my life. Do you know what the seating is for that arena? What, what, 10,000? 27,000. Yeah, 25. Yeah, soccer arena, right? Rugby. I think uh, it's a rugby joint. Well, it's soccer for Carson. Oh, it is? Oh, okay. But it, maybe they've changed it now because they lost their that soccer. The tenant, I think, left. Hmm. So uh, maybe it's a – but they, yeah, 27,000. But virtually all their games this year have been – the visiting crowd has taken over the stadium. Like when the Packers Den- played down there a couple when weeks Denver ago. Comes yeah. And uh, yeah, the Packer crowd. And uh, so the guy left San Diego <laughs> in, a, <laughs> in a hissy fit. Yes. Cause they wouldn't build him a ball. Build him a new and now he makes no money. Well, he'll be moving in as the second, second tenant. tenant. When's that open I, next year? Right. I, if, it's, yeah, if it's not next year, it's the year after, but it might, it might be next year. I can't remember. Cause the Raiders are moving to Las the, Vegas. The next luckiest year. guy in the history of the world though, is Mark Davis. Because the NFL, uh, the San Diego beat out them to be the second team in L.A. So they were going to leave Oakland hanging there, and now he's going to Vegas. Yeah, he's going to land spent, on his He spent feet. $600 million of his own money to build this stadium, to build half of this stadium or a third of it. But that's going to be Gold Mine City. Where is that? Right about. downtown? Or not downtown, no, it's right on the Strip? Uh, 
It's we, off the strip, but not not too far away. I just saw it the other. Didn't we tear down another old uh, casino or something to make room for it? I don't know. Yes, and they're saying, um, let's see, in time for the 2020 NFL season. Yeah. So it'll be next. It'll be ready for next year. It's, what are they hosting the Super Bowl? Because that will be something. Oh, oh man. my God! It might be pricey. Yeah, might be pricey for be. a room those uh, those nights. Mrs. Mazel was in Vegas uh, when I watched the episode last night. Mrs. Oh, really? It, it, that's watch? back on. I watched Mrs. Mazel. Mrs. I highly Maisel, recommend it. Uh, what the, I, what's that about? It's a the uh, amazing it's Mrs. Mazel. Amazing Mrs. Mazel. It's about a. Uh, a Jewish lass who's married and has the, uh, you know, the normal family going to the Catskills and doing all that. And she's funny and she becomes a, a comedian. And now this is year three and she's out on the road uh, and she's uh, opening for a, 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 fa- a mythical singer. And she she ends up in Vegas in, uh, in uh, episode three. That's all the further I made it. But the greatest thing about it is... Tony Shal Shalhab, how's a H S H A L H O U B Shalhab, yeah. Tony, he's the dad. Mm-hmm. He's fantastic. And then the father-in-law, whatever that guy's name is, her father-in-law is fantastic too. Then there uh, the the Kevin Pollock. Yes, yes, yeah, Kevin yeah. Pollock. The the old Jewish characters. Uh, he, the, and he's the, a, owns, is it a tailor? Or what does he own? A carpet company or? Uh, yeah, he has a shop. So far, I've not been convinced. No, Maria. no, oh, this is so is right good. up your alley. Oh, oh, it oh, is good. Um, terrible. Um, in bars, smoky drinks. In uh, fact, I said this comedy. on Twitter. If I had known in 1990 what I know now, which is the wife won't watch Mrs. Maisel with me, <laughs> I would have never paid 49 bucks to get married at the Little White <laughs> Chapel. Man. Uh, I said, how can you not like this? It's hilarious. A housewife in 1958 New York City who discovers she has a knack for stand-up comedy. Oh, maybe I'll have to take a look at it. Uh, Give it a shot. You'll start with year one. Don't leap into year three. uh, Amazon. What was the uh, story? I don't know if I'm watching. You got it. You got it. What was the story you told us about the Jewish guy with the uh, the tailor shop? Well, that that was the no. That was when you were in New York after the Giants game. When you were walking down, Mm -hmm. it was around lunch time. The Taylor came out of the uh, of the Taylor shop. And fell down. Boom! He gets hit by a car. Yeah. And uh, what did you run to him? You you tried to well, comfort him with your. I said, "Are you comfortable?" He says, "I make a nice living." <laughs> <laughs> That's one the kind of, the, of stuff you're gonna get. One of the highlights of my New York experiences was I needed a pair of shoes one oh, day, oh, and I went into one of these old New York yeah. shoe stores. Yeah. Where at my bulk, I could barely fit in the door or through the the uh, and the, then the guy when the guy went to go find the shoes, yeah. it was like going on a safari right. into these uh, you know he had them up there. It was fantastic. It was the best. I don't even know. I I think I paid over retail probably, but it was just to see the just to have the experience. Of a seventy-five-year-old Jewish sales guy uh, with a little, you know, narrow, tiny uh, uh, shoe store <laughs> in New York. It was great. I've never bought shoes on the road. I've bought a belt on the road. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't bought a lot of shoes on the road, but for some reason, it might have been a uh, that I was there for an event and realized I hadn't brought any shoes with me that were acceptable for the. Uh, a wedding or something like Is that. Is Mrs. Maisel supposed to be Joan Rivers, that type of deal? Mm, yeah, but uh, yeah, I think maybe it's There's it's some similarities off, where she's... Played off her, to, but she's... Uh, she's uh, pretty, she, she gets in trouble for doing some some vulgar. Yeah. She shows her chest in one of the things, and huh. she gets in trouble. She's basically in, because her husband, they, they, they split up, she's in... Uh, screw it mode. Yeah, mm-hmm. then and that's how she gets to learn that she's pretty funny doing comedy. Oh, okay, she is a smart aleck. But they have a Lenny Bruce character. Oh yeah, yes. who's you know obviously not Lenny since he's long dead. But uh, the guy playing Lenny Bruce is uh, uh, is uh, is just imagine they they play him pretty well. It's uh, it's good. It's uh, I, I I enjoy it, and my wife doesn't. It gives us another excuse not to watch TV together. <laughs> <laughs>
Which, of course, is the goal of everybody. The Wild are finally home for a couple of games. Uh, who, oh, the Wild, yeah. They're After a, getting their, aren't they home for quite a while in here? North Carolina. What's your theory? Are they good or not? No. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, well, so, you can't complain about the so road trip. Straight, Wait, I take that back. They're only home twice. They're home to Anaheim tomorrow, and then Edmonton. On Edmonton and Ed, Anaheim stinks. Thursday. And then Saturday, Philadelphia, Sunday at Chicago. At Philadelphia, at Edmonton's Chicago. Edmonton's got the best player in the world. Connor You're going to go watch him? Yeah, I might. Connor yeah. McDavid. Yes. I'd like and to see him. The yeah. stretch you're thinking about, Joe, I saw it on Twitter over the weekend. 14 from, out of 15. Yeah, from December 21st to Feb something, they only have four You know, if I games. was a season ticket holder, I'd hate that. Why? Because you got to go to like three games a week to get your money's worth. Yeah. Instead of, you know, okay, give me one of you know, give me six a month. You know, how many give they me lose? Six a month. Did they lose season ticket holders this year? Yeah, it was three over three thousand. Wow! Because you, if you've looked in the two newspapers, they have ads to uh, you know uh, five five game packages and stuff like that. Now they might have had those to some degree in the past, but it's it's kind of like the Twins early last year. Uh, you know, the five game packages, not not as cheap as the Twins were selling. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any of the North Carolina game, the uh, Carolina Hurricane game. Uh, they obviously, how can you beat Tampa, which is a great team, and then go in and fall apart like that at Carolina? I have it's no hockey. idea. Yeah, it's, it's random. Yeah. It's random. Well, if it's random, then okay, they're good enough if they're random. Yes. But they still yeah, don't have a sniper. Gonna, I tell you, I keep saying it, they're going to they're be two weeks to go in the season, and they're either going to be in the playoffs by three points or out of the playoffs for three points. They're going to go down to the nubbins. Well, you are still you were the one planning a parade for June. Well, yes, but uh, there might have been a twinge so. of uh, sarcasm so. in there. I think so. But Sir Topham can coach, man, so we got that Sir going Topham. for us. Oh, Sir Topham. We got that going for us. And, and, uh, and meanwhile, I uh, already today, uh, talking with Judd, was commenting on the Timberwolves and uh, expressing criticism of our large, soft superstar, who yet last night was playing against the guy who preceded him as the one and done freshman, mm-hmm. Antonio Davis at Kentucky, and then Cat came along, and they've been compared, mm-hmm. and there have been people foolish enough, stupid enough to suggest that Cat should be mentioned in the same breath as Dave Anthony Davis, not Antonio. Uh, unbelievable. 50 last night he got on Cat. Cat, meanwhile, Cat's out there 24 feet away trying to shoot threes. Get out by the basket! You're seven foot one, you big whip! Here's my trouble with the NBA. Yeah. LeBron James can do whatever he wants. <laughs> he can yeah, walk no. around, stop, start again. Okay, yeah, the other day they did. That was a bit the of video. a travel when he just walked. But the defensive player looked at the ref saying, <laughs> what are you looking at? He doesn't get called for it. No, no. And the and the Timberwolves, was it Friday night they lost? Uh, didn't at tuck o- in the shirt. OK City because they uh, – Called a technical because the kid didn't have his shirt tucked in. Mm-hmm. Well, what what Delay league are game. you? What league are you? Delay of game. Delay of game. Right. But it was comical because Chris Paul, who's been in the league for 20 years, yep. ran over the officials right. and said, hey, look at that dummy. He doesn't have his jersey tucked in. But still, Joe. They I know what you're going to say. They I know gave up a say. 90-foot pass you're to right. tie the game with 1.1 seconds to go. Right. But you're the guy that wants to... Uh, fine John Lester $15,000, $15 million because he can't throw it to first base. <laughs> That's right. No, I'd, I'd find him a million. Yeah. And but it's not analogous. And think how much you want to find Fernando Rodney for having his hat oh, crooked. Oh, me crazy. So this is a guy coming out with his jersey. And Fernando comes up with that phony story about he does that because that's the way his old man wore it in the fishing, fishing boat. boat yeah. B as very in heartwarming B. tale. Yeah, S right. as in S. Very heartwarming tale, if you ask me. Well, as a specialist, uh, which I tweeted out, of the travel and the double dribble, yes. I recognized it immediately when I saw it because i that's what I was very good at. It was incredible. Yes. It is. It, but the defender going, you didn't see that, please? I mean, <laughs> you're the only one. Yes. Yeah, everyone saw it. Oh, that's the other thing about that league that drives you crazy. Complaining about every call. Yeah. There should be a, you know what, I, I have my rules on that. Like, for instance, the NFL, mm-hmm. 
if the guy if the receiver gets up and goes like throwing a flag, yep. that should be 15 yards. Yep. Let's just get rid of that habit, okay? Because okay, it's, it's every play. Because you do it every play. Every play. Yeah. Why, and, are the, why are the uh, New England fans so hard on Brady? They're 10 and 2, aren't they? Or 10 and 3. 10 and 3. They're going to yeah. win their division. Because they're not 12 and 0. What the hell's wrong with those people? I was well, glad to see him He's, he's beat now him. 42, and he might not be as good as he has been. That's a shock, right? Yeah. They're still uh, 10 and 3, and he's well, not the, their number one problem. At the end of that game, they were showing a couple of Patriots fans, and I think it was Nance said, oh, and the dejection and the. They've won six Super Bowls yes. in the past two decades. I don't yes. think dejection's allowed in a regular season game. They're spoiled, in other Their words. big problem right now is Baltimore's way better than mm-hmm. they are. You know. Between the young guy and the you know quarterback and the defense they have, they're just way better. Well, and it's uh, you know, I I I think he'll leave, don't you? Who Brady? Brady? Mm, no, I don't think he will. Mm. Well, who's going to sign him? Well, somebody will sign him. I suppose, but I, I I don't think he'll leave. He he seems like he wants to play with this squad his whole career. But and he doesn't seem like the kind of guy that wants to stick at the Belichick. I, I don't. I don't believe did that. Did you see the video of the interview with Belichick's kid? Oh my no. God! No, have you? You got to see. This. They're identical. It's he won't say anything. Yep. You know, and they say, "Well, did you have some experiences with your father that were very uh, memorable for you as as you were coming up as a coach?" He said. Yeah, I have a couple of experiences. Can we get that on the screen and let me a, hear it? I yeah. have a couple. I have a couple of experiences, and then he says, "Well, could you perhaps share them?" Could you no, elaborate? No. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, could you elaborate? He says, no, I think no, I'll keep, I think that, keep that between us. Between us. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. But he has the uh, he has the the not the uh, mullet, but he's got the weird, goofy haircut. <laughs> and someone said, "Bill Belichick's kid looks like a meth dealer in Kentucky." <laughs> He's got the bad do. What's his name? Uh, Steve. Steve Belichick. Steve, Steve yes, yeah, Steve. Or Steven, I yeah. forget. But it's uh, it's pretty great. I've never been amused by Belichick's act. Except I'm when Caliendo am- parried it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, however, uh, that, that said, he's the smartest guy that ever coached football. Okay. No doubt about it. Yeah, there's no doubt. Why, you, yeah, you can't, that's it right there. You can't play this, can you? Why not? Can we hear it? Can I, our, we're going to yeah, find out. We're working out. on that right now, so give me a, give me a okay. second. Just. All right. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. What a, what a weenie he is. Steve That's Belichick. Sure. Hey, I, uh, so. Yeah, so. So we're trying to do Steve, Phil asked you about the chores. Do you have a memory of your first football chore or one of your first football chores that he asked you to do? Yeah, I got a couple memories of those. Anyone share? Good? Uh, yeah, those are between me and him, okay. yeah. What's the best way to? We play? laugh about him now. When did you first start watching film? Like he started when he was in high school. Um, I've, I've been watching it for a while. Uh, like I said, football is my thing. Um, I remember watching prime time with Chris Berman back when I lived in Cleveland, and just watching highlights, learning, going into my dad's office in uh, Cleveland, spending time there, trying to watch film. Like I said, I don't think I know what I was doing, but I was trying. So other kids were watching cartoons, you were watching film? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to spend time around football, spend time around my dad. Thank you, Steve. Figure I'll ask. Any shot you can tell us who's calling plays on the defense? I got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what did we learn? Okay, how's your memory of your sports writing days? Pretty well, good. try me, yeah. Who's your worst interview ever? Boy. You never covered Maurer, so you can't be Joe. No, it would have been a football player. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Ken Norton. Now you sound like Joe Belichick. Yeah, I sound yeah. like Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I there were some bad ones, but uh, <laughs> there were some bad ones. But I can't. Uh, that, most of mine were more belligerent guys than than the people who wouldn't answer the the question. Who whatsoever. was the pitcher for the Twins? Who uh, it was for Minnesota, up Alexandria? Oh, away. Dave Goltz. Dave Goltz. Yeah, he, he might have. He might have been in there. Yeah, he was. He was the type of guy who would call home on a, the morning after he pitched to see what everybody wrote about him. Mm-hmm. And then he yeah. really, you. yeah. Wow. So he got me one time for that. 
poor Goltzi, uh, you know, he ended up being another LaRue Harcourt guy. He got his money stolen by yeah. LaRue Harcourt, too. He got the nice contract from Boston, but he was, LaRue Harcourt was Ply Levin's agent, and he got Bill Campbell's money, he got uh, Goltz's money, he got, he ended up in federal prison. Oh, he did? Yeah, LaRue Harcourt, but he ended up, these guys never got their money back. Is Goltz yeah. back in Minnesota, I wonder? Selling real. Last I heard, he was selling real estate in Rothsay, up in the Lake That's region. He, he from, might Rothsay. sell. He might sell uh, Kenny. Kenny. Uh, Kenny uh, but he uh, would. He would have been okay if his money had been taken care of. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Dodgers gave him a nice contract. Yeah. He signed there as a free agent. He had a. He had a year with the Twins where he pitched damn near three hundred innings. Holy mm-hmm. cow! Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, he was pretty good for them. Remember that slow, laborious wind up. He reminded he me of Davis Love the Third. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, physically and uh, kind of officious. You mean was, Pat's good friend Davis was Love the Third? Nice enough kid, but he was uh, very. Uh, he wasn't sophisticated in the no. ways of the world, no. having grown up in Rossi. <laughs> no, so that's oh, a nice. Yeah, that was pleasantly put. Pleasantly my buddy put. was Gary Serum. Remember Gary Serum? S e r u m, local boy. Yeah, uh, he was. I think he was small town too. I can't remember, but. I quoted him as saying something, complaining about uh, how he was being used or something. And then he got the manager, whoever it happened to be then, I can't remember who, jumped him on it. And uh, he he denied, he said that, uh, he never said that, and I made it up. So I I was friends with him. I went to him the next day, and I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, I had to say that. (laughs) (laughs) Serum was, uh, he's 63, born in Fargo. North Sarah? Dakota, yeah. Yeah, but I think that was like the hospital he was born in. I think he's in some smaller town. Okay. I recall us having a football player that you can choose if you want to name him or not on the ride with Royce. And you looked at me about three minutes in and went, what am I going to do? He's not saying anything. <laughs> uh, oh, that was Everson when oh, yeah. we first got him, yeah. And Everson loosened up a little bit. He did, but, but he was... the first couple of weeks he was yeah. a little stiff. Well, Studwell was the most hostile ever. Studwell was the Studwell was probably the worst. For Ron me. Yeri was hostile. Oh, I didn't. You know, I never had bit. to deal with him. I was bit. always dealing with the visitor. Yeah, well, he, was. he was always holding. Yeah. The other thing about him is he hated Darkington. Yeah, Yeri and oh, Darkington. Oh, he did. Yeah, I hated him. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah, he. Uh, it really agitated him that when Fran came back in '72. Suddenly, Fran, you know, he got off the plane and he was selling Anderson Cadillacs yeah. and uh, TCF, I think. And, you know, within 24 hours, he was on, and all these guys who'd been winning games and, you know, plowing had no ads whatsoever, and Fran came in, and he did not uh, like Francis. Patrick, if you can turn around and look at the, <laughs> the big screen here, uh, I, I taped this and put it on my Twitter page and uh, watched as New Orleans Saints fans booed this call on the replay, this face mask call, they they <laughs> yes. booed it. They yes. were booing right. this. <laughs> almost, almost removed his head. I yes. saw that play. And they were still booing. Yeah. And I just How do you to... call that? What's that guy's name? Killerton? George Kittle. 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 He wouldn't go what down. A beast. What a he monster. wouldn't go down. I watched it, too. <laughs> yeah, I think I was like, well, Marcus Williams, and he's, after a while, he said, well, they're going to call me for this, so I better. I might as well get my money's better worth. Better get him down a <laughs> no. bit. The guy should have been thrown out of the game. Yeah. I mean, after twelve seconds, you probably should let go. Of Man, him. that was a hell of but a football that's game. But that's that's a game a play right there where okay, he can go. Yeah, throw yeah. The yeah. He dragged <laughs> him for I think Walt yards. Anderson. We we don't have a problem if Walt throws a flag on that one. <laughs> right. yeah, that was. A, well, I wonder if the guy's hand was stuck in there or something. He, he couldn't, couldn't get, get it out. out. He was not yeah. letting go. Hey, yeah. should we take a break here and come back with? Yes. We got a sports hero of the uh, yes, we hour do. or a week or yes, whatever we I have. Do. I told You're you, you're dragging out you those old it? certificates. What? Do we have to mail them something? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take Jamie care of them. Back. She's got to be a star. All right, here we go. I'll tell you what. If you were looking for a great place to go after the football game, how about Jack's Cafe? Jack's Cafe is located in northeast Minneapolis. After those home games, or maybe even after a away game, whether they win or lose, Jack's Cafe in northeast Minneapolis is the place to go. Great cocktails, great ambiance, wonderful, wonderful back patio to sit and gaze at. No, you're not going to go eat out there. You're just going to go look at how well it's 
it's decorated. Also, if you're taking your guy or your gal out, ask about the GL Rookie VIP Date Night Menu. It is a wonderful deal for less than 100 bucks. includes a bottle of wine, a four-course meal for two, including dessert, and you just get to sit and chat and look into their eyes and say, I love you. Jack's Cafe, J-A-X-C-A-F-E dot com. It's jackscafe dot com. Planning that office party, or maybe like the Ricey family, you were there for Thanksgiving, were you not? Yes, and you should see the Santa sleigh that they have out on the patio there in the back. I think it's been there. I think it's an antique that's worth a lot of money. It's gorgeous. I haven't been out there yet, but that's the next thing yes. I'm going to do. The Very back. well decorated. Much better record, de- rec- uh, decorated than the <laughs> Ophthalmologist. The Ricey home <laughs> yes. is at the moment. We have not cited Christmas in any way as of yet. Uh, anyway. Well, what you can do is call this number, 612 789 7297, and give them the secret word ophthalmologist, and you can book. <laughs> it, it's, uh, Billy does a great job out there. Jax, J A X C A F E dot com. Let them know that you heard it on the Monday Night Sports Talk podcast. Speaking of Josh, what are you waiting for? Uh, Call my friend, Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. He will give you a different point of view and get your financial future in order starting today. Sound retirement planning is important, and that's what Josh does. With today's market volatility, it's more important than ever to work with a professional who understands your needs, a professional who understands financial markets and the options available to help you reach your goals. Call Josh for a complimentary, no obligation, 48-minute consultation, no sales pitch, just straight talk. If you decide that Josh is your guy, rest assured he will dedicate his efforts to help you reach an optimal retirement. Call Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold, 952-925-5608. And remember, investment advisor services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a registered advisor in the state of Minnesota. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. Can't the NFL... What am I hearing? Just bring it back a little music oh. here. Okay. Can't the NFL flex certain games to Monday yes, night they games? Do. They have... Well, not to Monday night because games. Because there's they no... Can. This is ridiculous. Who's the, the Giants at Philadelphia? Yes. Yeah, they That's were trying the one to, day they can't change. They were trying to get us uh, fired up for that last week watching the very good Viking-Seattle game, but I don't think I'll be watching. No. Uh, but they did uh, flex our boys out of... Mm-hmm. Uh, was that yesterday? No, that's the Chargers game next Sunday. Chargers it was supposed game, to be they, the Sunday night game. They moved us out of Sunday night, cause, not because of the Vikings, but because of the Chargers. Who were they putting in instead? Uh, I don't recall who they moved to that uh, game. Something they some must think some is team a, that oh. has some playoff... Uh, how about that NFC uh, East, though? Oh, that's they might all end up with below 500. Yes, yes, and they still get a home game. Of course, that happened with uh, Seattle. Didn't Seattle beat New Orleans the year after New Orleans won the Super Bowl mm-hmm. when they were 7-9? and nine? Yes, they did. Beat them up there, yeah. When Marshawn Lynch had the slowest 70-yard run in the history of the—do you remember that play? Mm-mm. He was be, he was surrounded by his linemen. He wasn't running very fast because he's just not a fast running back. But they couldn't get to him. It was one of the great runs ever. Hey, sports person of the day. Who is it, Pat? Do you got any sound? Yeah, yeah. Who is it? Jimmy Butler, Miami Heat. I know everyone in Minnesota has wished him well since he left town here. Butler comes in. Out to Hero for three. Yes! With seven seconds left, Tyler Hero puts Miami up by two. Why is he going to sports hero? Because Miami is 17 and 6, and he's playing like crazy. He didn't play the first three games of the year because he didn't want to get booed here in the season opener. Since then, he's had a bunch of. Uh, the triple doubles and uh, and the whole deal. He's playing great, and that team is uh, you know a threat in the East, uh, and they're seventeen and six. Meanwhile, the three guys the uh, Chicago got their numbers are pretty good. Mark Markin and uh, Chris Dunn doesn't do much, but Zach Levine. But they can't win any games. They're eight and sixteen or something like that. 
Uh, golfers play at Iowa tonight. Yes, Big Ten opener. They opened the, the Big Ten already. Big Ten, yeah, they remember the two early oh, that's December right. games. That's How right. do you expect them to be? Uh, I'd say seven and thirteen. NIT, baby. Here we go. NIT. Really? I think they'll be NIT. And by the way, the uh, uh, next Sunday, Ohio State, which might be the best team in the country, is the home opener in the Big Ten. Joe. How do you like this change in our uh, sports landscape? Not a single Big Ten Saturday home game at Williams Arena. You're Isn't kidding. That something? Yeah. Not nice. a single Big Ten home game That's at foolish. Williams Arena. When are they? On Sunday? Sundays and Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday. Is this all because of the network? Big yeah. Ten Network? Yeah, no Saturdays. No Saturday game. That's stupid. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Did you, uh, unbelievable. You see the way St. John's beat Wheaton? Yes. Did they put a? Did they? I hope they uh, uh, put some watch on that uh, kid from Wheaton, the uh, well, the, the kicker. So no, he missed two points. Yeah, but there. here's what you did. Here's what happened. Wheaton is down near the goal line, and all of a sudden they put this beast in this offensive lineman, who's not a running back, and they let him run the ball three times. Mm-hmm. And the third time he plows into the end zone, and the ref is standing from me to Reavers. And he spikes the ball viciously. Mm-hmm. You can't do that anymore. Fifteen yard penalty. Oh. So now the field, now the extra point instead of being from the what it's from the thirty five basically, yeah. and uh, he misses it. And then they call offsides on St. John's and something. They call offsetting penalties. He misses it again. Isn't that something? And uh, St. John's beats him 34-33. Did Walt Anderson's crew do that game, too? Uh, I, I don't know. But the uh, but the guy, you know, the I guess I didn't see it, but my reports are it was a, like a big emphatic spike. I didn't know you couldn't spike never, the ball. No, you can't spike it like Ornately or in college, just, you know, Oh, I did not, not know that. College. I don't think they even do it in the NFL anymore. Do, do they, they play Whitewater now? Yes. Where? Which, do we know where? At yet? Whitewater. At Whitewater. Yeah. They weren't that high seated, you know, because they I lost wish they'd it. get that on TV. I think the title game. I know Jax has had watch parties. Does Jax right? have another Johnny watch party? On I'll Sunday, find out Saturday? from Billy. Let's I'll find, find out from Billy. Be sure to report that on Garage Logic, would you please? I'm going to text him right now. So, Pat, mm-hmm. I can't wait to monitor your Twitter later today because we have a little breaking baseball news. Your cheap poll ad tweets are coming. Are you ready, sir? Okay. The defending World Series champs have re-signed Steven Strasburg to a seven-year, $245 million contract. I uh, don't understand the economics. Mm-hmm. Just don't understand. My, what is Garrett Cole going to get if Strasburg got 245 Well, and they say the Yankees are going to sign him. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great time to be a... Bumgarner just went up to 110 million. Yes, he did. And he's, you know, we don't even know what he's got left. So 240 million. Pineda no. got a two-year deal. Yes. Yeah, but, I don't but, sign him. But mm-hmm. he's, uh, we don't have to pay him for those too much, Joe. You're, uh, you're, you don't worry about those. All They'll right. be fine. It's still 20 million. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Well, it's technically 17. Yeah, is it 20 million to, minus the two months? He'll be able to yes. afford to keep his nutrition up. Yeah. <laughs> Biggest human being I've ever seen in a baseball clubhouse. Unbelievable. Well, what are the Twins going to do? They need a starter. They need another yes, starter. Yes, they do. Maybe uh, maybe Baumgartner. Maybe the Korean guy. I don't know. Although I don't I think don't it, I think luck the with Dodge. Korean guys hasn't been that good. No, no. If I was an Asian guy, maybe a pitcher would work out because the uh, hitters uh, the uh, hitters haven't. Do we had a we had a Korean uh, lefty though, right? <laughs> Will you tell the TK story about TK and Dark story I about that tell signing? That again. Sure, I've told it a hundred times. <laughs> I don't but, care. Uh, Nishioka is going to replace. Uh, the guy who went to Baltimore, JJ uh, Hardy. JJ Hardy. I still say they got the wrong Nishioka. Yeah, I think they might have. <laughs> but he shows up. He's going to be a shortstop. We introduce him. Everybody's excited. The dark man goes down for his annual spring training stay, where he rooms with Kelly, which tells us TK is a very patient man. <laughs> they go to the dog track together and stuff, and so TK picks him up at the airport, and we haven't played a game yet. It's still workout time, you know, and uh, Dark says, how are they looking? And he says, man, you know, they're looking, you know, okay. He said, Japanese kid can't play. (laughs) 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 
I haven't played yet. And, uh, he'd seen him take eight ground balls and said, uh, nope, this, this ain't, ain't going to work. work. <laughs> this ain't going to work out. So one day, you know, the, my famous, one of my favorite Viking plays ever is when Troy Williamson got hit in yes. the helmet with a pass from Tarveris Jackson and Nietzsche. My baseball is when Nishioka played the ground ball off his chest in Toronto. Remember that? <laughs> he went out and went like, ah! <laughs> Look like a, like a T-baller. My favorite was uh, when we used to have the Twins down the hall, and I think they were in Cleveland or Chicago. I can't remember. And he lost a pop-up, and Gladden went ballistic <laughs> on the call. <laughs> he can't see it. <laughs> I remember wishing that Gardenhire would have gone out and just put his arm around his shoulder yeah, and say, come yeah. on, we'll just we'll play, play with eight guys. We'll yeah. play with eight. Play with yeah, we're eight. Good. We'll play with eight. Well, he, he got him off the hook. They didn't have to pay him for the third year. He went back home. So. Yes. Hey, I got to bring up one family issue, not involving the wife. Yeah. Uh, but so the granddaughter, the 10 and under, they're the bronze bombers. They always play for the bronze. They never play for the gold. You know, every <laughs> what time, sport are we talking like about? Two, hockey. Yeah. Like two two years every game they're playing for the hey, you got an early Sunday game, they're playing for the bronze. Right. I didn't make it to Otana. They were in Otana this week. They they get beat in the bronze game Sunday morning, three to two. Ooh. And now I find out Saturday they had two games. And then they went to bowling, and then they went to the water park. I tuckered them out. What the hell? I tuckered them out. Too much fun. That's right. them out. Too, too much, much fun. fun. They Put should it. be up in the room reading the scouting report <laughs> right. on the Lock team. Them How in. are you going to win the bronze when you're <laughs> swimming and bowling? Uh, you can't. You got to concentrate. You got to get ready. We we had a chance for the bronze, and you were out there swimming and laughing and having a good old you know time. What? I'm sorry. This is what happened. My experience. Yes. You drive to Silver Bay. Yes. Right. You are Highland, and then you end up playing, you know, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Circle Pines yes, or something right. like that in Silver Bay. And all the kids do is they want to play knee hockey. They want to. They tucker themselves yes, up. That's right. why you lost. Why did we make this long trip? Yes. Down to Owatonna. You stay overnight, and you're swimming and giggling and uh, you know, you know, bowling. The Come parents and studying film. Yeah. That's right. Pat would have. Gone. Safety meeting. Pat would have gone letter canny coach on that, where he's describing yes. bleeping yes. embarrassing. Yes, yes. Right. we'll have to show him that. Whatever these little kids are, are they put on a bus? No, no, I mean, you're a caravan with the families, but the families got to get a hotel oh, room. Oh God, and yeah, that's that's, that's expensive. That's the expensive part, right? It's the a whole trip. weekend because it's Friday night, and then you again you play a Saturday game, and then if you make it, you know you might play a Sunday I game. I told you this, the Lee Smith. I was talking to the Lee Smith, the Eden Prairie coach, who's a fantastic guy. And last year, he told me he said, he was complaining about all they put these kids through in youth hockey, you know, yeah. tournaments, and yes. he said. He said, our Bantams went up the War Road, or maybe the 13-year-old, maybe even the Pee Wees. They went up to the War Road for a tournament, and they played Chanhassen, Bloomington, <laughs> yes. and uh, Edina. Edina. You know, they played, They went up, the, they drove the War Road to play Edina. Yes. <laughs> Remember when Edina played International Falls? Yes. Back in the day, back yes. in the 60s? Yes. They didn't drive. No. Naira put him in a private jet. <laughs> <laughs> or he took one of the Northwest planes and wow. flew, him, flew him to uh, International Falls. Who did the Falls? Remember when the Falls beat Johnson 1 0 in the final? Mm, about 63 one, or 4. 1 0 in the final. Johnson yeah. was great. And the Falls, that was their dynasty. Yep. And the start, I was a copy boy at the Trib. And this was, they were so devoted to regional coverage, especially with their Sunday paper. They were going to fly 15,000 papers to International yep. Falls, put them on a plane, you know, yep. to get the score in the game. And a guy named Dave Andrews, a young guy, uh, was downstairs, and the Falls beat him one to nothing. He put the wrong headline in. Oh. And they, they flew 15,000 oh, papers. No. Flew 15,000 papers to International Falls and said, Wow. Johnson beats Falls, one nothing in title game. Collector's items. They're probably <laughs> hanging in saloons. Change yeah. all yes, the right. armies to yeah. navies and change all the navies they to army. Uh, <laughs> I think Dave was uh, summoned to uh, the publisher's office and told, you know, 
we understand mistakes, but Not that's one. one that can't this be made. That's one that can't be made. We were going to be heroes, and we became a joke. You know. So anyway. What do you okay. think? Okay. Is that good? Yes. I think that's <laughs> no, Have you been entertained Excellent. enough? Have you people been entertained yes, enough? I hope so, damn it. Sounds like a plan. All right. We'll Next week chance. for Dang Sure. The Zim? What's for Dang Sure next week? <laughs> is this Zim? No, we're, this is just our wrap up music because we show. can play it. No, I know, but what's next week for Dang Sure? Now you're getting sports we'll talk. We'll be well, back. I'm, Okay, I knew that. For oh, sure. Yeah. I guarantee it. I am what the pump suit guy. Zimmeron from the Blue Saloon. A new sports person of the week. Oh, yeah, yeah I look forward to it. <laughs> because you know why? Because we won't forget. You need a sign? I'm going to get you a sign. Yeah, yeah. Eight. I believe now this is uh, two straight weeks we've remembered. That's right. right. That's right. So the sports person of the week. And I saw our girl, Jamie Erdahl, on TV for the Wisconsin-Ohio uh, State game. Right? Oh, yeah. She was doing the interviews. Just think, she'd be she'd be doing weekend anchor in Duluth. Right, right. She had to come for here us. and gain that experience. Right. right. Here, fill this out, Jamie, and mail this out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? She still loves us for it. Yes, I, we don't does. know why. Yes, she does. All right. Next time, Monday Night Sports Talk podcast version found at GarageLogic.com. <laughs>